And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show here. I'm Hugo Traverso. Uh, I am going to be hosting today. Uh, we are going to have our exclusive interview with Tom Dunlap. And this is going to be interesting, folks. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to be your host here. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, weirdly reads that it's uh, at, at red, but... Uh, Let's just uh, tone it down here a little bit. Is this it? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. I would believe it's it. Uh, I don't know why it's reading at red, but okay, folks. Here we go. Red Red means it's like high, high, uh, high audio. Uh, It's not a good place. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are working, and let's keep going. No, no, Dad. It's the audio in in the mic. Okay, I'm your producer. Here you go. Dad, you're not really my producer. Okay. But I don't even know what a, what our producer in radio does. So, well, I know that he runs the whole entire show with all the sounds yeah, and all this stuff. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, let us dial him TD. up. TD. Let's dial him up. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh. You know. Uh. Let's just. Uh, should we just jump into it? Um. Yeah, man. How are you? Uh. Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah, um, I mean, the, you know, you, you know, you've produced for so many, like, different people, like, so many different great companies, and, you know, just wanted to ask you for your first question here, um, uh, for your first question, uh, what made you want to go into the fi- film business? That's a great question, Hugo. You know, my story is sort of a right place, right time kind of story. So I started out actually in both theater and in video arts classes in my high school there in Santa Rosa at Cardinal Newman. And um, when I went to college, I first thought I was going to be a doctor. Like I was like, that's what my dad is. And I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. And I never really thought that you could have a career in the performing arts or in theatrical arts or in the film arts. I just really had no point of view there and back in those days you know in the 90s we didn't have the internet to really be able to research careers so i went to college i was went to be a a doctor and that didn't work uh very well um i didn't know i really when my mind wasn't built for all the analytics and math and chemistry and all those things and so then i decided i was going to pursue a business degree and one of my business classes, I had this. I was in a marketing and advertising class, and I never really thought about marketing or advertising. And my teacher said to me, "Hey, you should. Uh, you know, we had to write some ads. You know, as part of an assignment." And she said to me, she was an executive at a local advertising agency near the University of Denver, where I went to college. And she said to me, "You should think about advertising." And I guess I had written some. Um, concepts for her class that she really liked and so she you know and writing for advertising is a a unique art form because you have to write stories in 30 seconds so I sort of pursued that and I talked to some friends and some contacts and kind of started to learn a little bit about advertising Um, and at the same time I was also doing a little bit more film kind of video work in college just as a fun thing And I ended up getting an internship at an advertising agency in Los Angeles called TBWA Shiat Day. And um, the internship was in the broadcast department. Um, And I didn't even, I just got randomly placed in that. Um, I I knew somebody in that department, uh, one of my father's friends. So we ended up, he's like, oh, sure, I'll take Tom as an intern. And when I landed in that department, I started to see how commercials were being made and that there was directors and film producers and editors involved. And I saw that you could actually have a career working in film and working in commercials and working in advertising. And I was instantly hooked. Um, And I found the exact calling that I was looking for, an area which was a career that balanced not only my creative side with my business side. 
Um, and that's really how I fell into it. Um, once I kind of understood that the film was a big part of it, I then went back to school. I went to US UCLA um, extension program and, and kind of started to really study and, and, and make up the deficit in my education by trying to just kind of understand what it meant to be a film producer. I started taking classes in film theory and editorial and production technology. Um, but really it was my on the job training that really got me hooked. And, um, I, I'm the type of person that really comes at things with, comes at things with a lot of curiosity. Um, and so I, I started to, uh, grow really fast in that job because I was very curious and I explored a lot of things and I made myself very valuable to the process. So. Um, really it was just being in the right place at the right time, kind of being curious, um, exploring things that you find that are interesting, meeting the people that are doing those things and, and, and just becoming a, a student and, a, and having that growth mindset, that learning mindset at all times. So that's how I got into it. Yeah. Um, uh, one second here. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, UCLA and USC top film schools in L.A., right in L.A., you get in the business. But, um, you know, I was doing my research, doing some digging, and I found that you were just about two years ago put in uh, with another dude to write uh, to head a, uh, a company. Um, so my next question is, how is it at 72 and sunny, and how is it creating ide uh, idea ad ideas for companies like Adidas, Nike, NFL, Google, and Call of Duty. The, the question is, how? What is it like to create those ideas? Yeah, and like what? And how is it at uh, at um, at seventy two and sunny? Yes, that's a great question. You know, um, so I'm going to answer it in two parts. Um, firstly, I actually run a company called HO Studios. Um, I used to work at 72 and Sunny, and I founded this new company, which is a, um, a what we call a production agency, a creative production agency. I founded it um, while working at 72 and Sunny, and we're all part of the same family, uh, but we work, we work together on a lot of things on the production side, there on the creative side. But I did work at 72 and Sunny for a long time, as well as really big creative ad agencies like White and Kennedy and Deutsch. Um, what I love about working at these big advertising agencies on big global ideas is, th is the ability to affect culture on a global scale. When you're working with brands like Adidas or Nike or the NFL or Google or Activision, you're creating not only advertising, but you're creating entertainment. You're shaping pop culture. You're helping people um, discover things that they didn't know existed before that might make them more creative or make entertain them. So I get I got hooked early on by working with these gigantic global advertising brands and just seeing the power that I harnessed globally by the work that I was making that was not only showing on televisions and in movie theaters here in the U.S., but might be playing in Brazil or in China or in Russia or in Africa. And that was that is really powerful. When you know what you're doing has a global audience that when you put a piece of music on something, um, it has a global reach. Like for an example... I have the number five most disliked video on YouTube, if you can believe that. Um, somewhere behind Justin Bieber and a few others, and that's a Call of Duty commercial that I produced a couple years ago. Oh. And just the fact that that video became the fifth most disliked video in the history of YouTube shows that the power in which one, when you're working with brands like that, the scale in which you operate on. So I really enjoy it because it's one, you typically end up, you know, getting the budgets and the creative opportunities. 
in which to do that when you're operating on that scale. Um, and two, it's just really fun. You know, I travel the world constantly, um, you know, doing filming in all sorts of places, whether it's Antarctica or, you know, South Africa or Zimbabwe or in Russia. Again, like China, we travel the world um, doing the things we do. And so um, creating ideas for brands that allow you to do that is really, really fun. Yeah, I mean, that is incredible. Um, I mean, that is, I know about that disliked video because a lot of people, you know, said that it wasn't, you know, like the actual Call of Duty, uh, you know, what, like the former Call of Duties. But yeah, I mean, it's it's good that you're behind, uh, you know, Justin Bieber's first, you know, hit because that was, oh, yeah. that is terrible. <laughs> I mean, as many, as many, what a good company to be in, you know, it's like, you know, all fame is good fame. Mm -hmm. As many comedians say, uh, Justin Bieber's, uh, Kim Jong-un uses Justin Bieber's baby song to uh, torture people. Oh, that's great. Yeah. But, um, uh, moving on, um, uh, you, you know, you worked with, you know, the city of LA and, um, and uh, Arena Football League, uh, Arena Football uh, franchise owner uh, Casey Wasserman to, uh, to bring the Olympics to LA. You know, just how how was that? How is that? And you know, you know how how's you know how's working on it? Oh, that was one of the most amazing experiences I've had in my career. And I've done some pretty amazing things, like launched the Apple iMac with Steve Jobs and. And, you know, helped create the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Um, but that was one of the more amazing moments in my life. Number one, because I'm a Los Angeles, you know. Yes, I grew up in Northern California, but I was born in Southern California. I was born in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. And it's a, it's a city for me that has been really good to me. And so getting the opportunity to show the world the pride that I have in this city and being able to help create tens of billions of dollars worth of jobs and, and revenue for people in this city was a great honor. And it was one that I did not take lightly and neither did anyone on our team. So we wanted to, you know, the Olympics is like one of the coolest things in the world. And um, getting the opportunity to help create the strategies and the platforms and the plans to bring that here to LA was, was quite an honor. Um, and, and so working with Casey Wasserman and his team, um, helping, helping to craft the vision that he and Mayor Garcetti had for those games and helping to bring them to life um, through well, my little part of the world, through content and through film and, and, and experiences, what was a major honor. Um, and it showed me, you know, when we did it, um, when we pitched, that, at that point we were pitching for the 2024 Olympics. Um, it was, you know, L.A., Los Angeles was, was, was seeing this, and it still is, this creative renaissance. And so being able to show the world how amazing this city is um, was, was a great responsibility for us. Um, and the process of being in the rooms with the first, the U.S. Olympic Committee and showing them our plan, we actually lost it. If you, if you researched it, we actually initially lost the bid to Boston. Uh, but when they realized they couldn't afford to do it we got it back and then pitching that idea to the international olympic committee um, again working on a global scale there was a there was part of the presentation where which i thought was really cool uh after we'd gone through a lot of this and we were we were taking the uh the presentation i think to switzerland to the headquarters the international olympic committee i think it was geneva uh, maybe lister i can't remember and we had done um, sort of a first of its kind virtual reality experience um, where we had shown the where all the venues in the city of Los Angeles in VR 
VR was a new upcoming technology at this time. Um, we had to, you know, find ways to shoot at UCLA where the Olympic Village was going to be, um, and how to tell that story. We needed to go to, you know, where they were going to do the rowing events and the sailing events and the swimming events and what downtown was going to be like. But then we needed to find a way for everybody on the IOC Intellectual International Olympic Committee to be able to see this work simultaneously. So we had to create a technology strategy that could be deployed in Switzerland for the presentation. So we had to, only way to film this thing, we had to figure out how to deliver the experience to the IOC and all their members in, um, in, in, in Switzerland for the big presentation. So again, it was, it was just like a lot of, um, you know, using a lot of different types of people, all folks from Los Angeles that were, you know, proud to contribute to, you know, bringing, bringing the games to the city. And Casey Wasserman is a hell of a nice guy. Like I can see why he is where he is now and what he does. I was very impressed with, with him. Um, and, um, you know, how he operates. So it was a really fun experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, update on the Call of Duty, uh, you know, dislikes rates is uh, uh, th 3.8 million dislikes, which isn't that bad compared to a lot of other video uh, dislike videos. Oh, it's not my Call of Duty video? Yeah, it's at 3.8 million dislikes. Yeah, but it is the fifth, I think it's the fifth most disliked video on YouTube. Yes, but, uh, yeah, but, I mean, it, it, it's still, I mean, it's got 623,000 <laughs> likes. Oh, likes, too, yeah. And then, let's see, wait, let's see, there's also, there's also, you're probably in, uh, Tide, in, uh, for, um, for, uh, you know, Rebecca Black's Friday, which was also very, 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 very interesting song to see, uh, listen to, and then... Oh, I'm at number 14 now, so I have moved, I moved down in the ranks. Which is really good. Yeah. I was really trying to compete with Baby Shark Dance. That was really what I was aiming for, so... <laughs> yeah, he has, uh, what's his name, has, uh, over 11 million dislikes. <laughs> uh, the worst, the most disliked video, um... I mean, you talked about working with the Olympics, and uh, my question about the Olympics, uh, where is the opening ceremony going to be? Is it going to be, you know, at the Rose Bowl, or is it going to be at the Coliseum? You know, it's interesting. We, um, we don't know that yet. You know, um, that is um, one, one of the beautiful things about the Olympics coming to Los Angeles was is the fact that there are so many new locations to choose from. Um, take, for example, the new SoFi Stadium. Uh, that's where I believe right now the opening ceremonies are scheduled, opening and closing ceremonies are scheduled to be the one, the stadium that opened just yesterday for the Rams Cowboys game. Um, but, you know, we're still, we're talking 2028, so we've got, uh, we've got about eight seven and a half years before they make that decision. But how does it feel that the Olympics are coming to the U.S. twice in the next uh, 10 years, with L.A. being one of them, and then in 2030 we have the Winter Olympics coming to the great Salt Lake City, Utah. How does it feel, you know, to have the Olympics in the U.S.? Is that confirmed? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed. Salt Lake the City. 2030 Winter Olympics, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed. Yeah, let me see here. I know that there's been some conjecture about it. I think they're bidding on it. Um, listen, I think, you know, the thing about the Olympics is that, that what bothers me and what I learned through the process is, you know, when this thing goes to all these other countries, um, you know, we're very fortunate here in the United States to have infrastructure safety, um, and, you know, uh, a stable, usually a stable economy. Um, what I see happen so often is when the Olympics go to places like Brazil or take even what they were supposed to be in Tokyo this year, 
you, they can sometimes decimate those local economies. Um, and what that is not the spirit of the games. What the spirit of the games are is to bring people together and to create this giant show. Um, so I love the fact that America, the U.S., can be can, can be that host um, for these countries so that they don't go bankrupt. You know, we don't have to do that, and we're a relatively safe place to be. And it allows us to show the world, you know, away from all the politics and away from all the, you know, the things you may read about our country when you're overseas that are actually a pretty good place to be. And so to me, that's pretty exciting that we're able to show the world, you know, what, what this country is made of in a peaceful and stable way. Yeah, I think L.A. will actually, uh, it's probably better than Boston because I have read up on, you know, the things that you were talking about, the Olympics econ uh, economically. You know, I've heard, I saw in Beijing 2008, they threw, like, I think 1.7 million on the streets to build a soccer uh, field. I mean, I think that uh, L.A. is not going to be able to, is probably not going to have to because they've got so many great venues, including, you know, the Rose Bowl, the L.A. Coliseum, as you said, SoFi Stadium. You know, they have some great uh, revenues, or excuse me, venues, and, you know, they've also got one uh, upcoming one that's going to be in 2024, which is the new Clippers uh, stadium that's coming. Yep. And, I mean, yep. and I don't think you guys are probably going to have to build anything else because you'll probably have enough. You know, and you won't have to throw that many people out of their homes. You are 100% correct. There is, with the exception of a few things like kayaking and, um, I think, uh, what was the other thing we had to build? There's very few things that we had to build in which to pull off this Olympics. That's why I made it affordable. And, and on top of it, Elon Musk said that he would make the entire games um, run by solar power. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. But you were talking about Hatcho uh, Studios. How's it working? I, I saw, saw this article, you know, from 2018. Uh, you, how's it working with, uh, uh, G, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, uh, gosh. Um, Let's try it. Go for it. Uh, Jui Borchett. How, how, or Borchert? <laughs> Borchett? Borchert? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, all good. Um, his name is Guy Borchert. Okay, he um, Guy is a real jerk. Uh, don't recommend, just kidding. Um, no, Guy is a really good friend of mine. And, you know, I'm a producer. Um, my job is to help bring creative ideas to life in whatever medium it might be, whether it's film, television, podcasts, print, um, digital video, social videos. And so for me, I love partnering with really creative people that are innovative. And Guy um, is one of the most creative um, powerhouses that I've ever worked with in my career. And the two of us, we're no longer working together. He actually went to a new company at the beginning of the year. Uh, he went to, or actually at the beginning of the summer, he went to Squarespace to be their um, chief creative officer. But during the time of us working together, um, we built a company together and won a lot of awards together. Um, and we just have a really, um, we, we have a great working experience. And so Guy's role, so as I'm a producer, Guy's role is to create, come up with the ideas. He's the creative behind the productions and, and the ideas. So he's an idea generator. So he thinks about what the script is and what the thing should look like and how you would film it, um, what kind of editorial style you would use, or what kind of music you put on something. Um, he directs a lot of the work that we did together. So now he and I had a great working relationship. Um, we talk every week. We're still working together even though he's at a different company. But um, I, really, I really do appreciate him and the work that he does. And uh, your bonus question, um, what was your inspiration for the logo? <laughs> yes, so the logo for the Olympics? Yeah. So 
a couple things, actually, and it combines a couple inspirations. So, you know, our campaign to bring the Olympics here was called Follow the Light. Um, and that's where you see in the, in the logo, there's all those different colors. It almost looks like a sunrise or a sunset. Um, and then, of course, we're the City of Angels. So, you know, Los Angeles is the City of Angels. So um, what we did is we combined this idea of this angel reaching for the sky and this, you know, in the color scheme of a sunset. So follow the sun. Um, in which the, so that's how we brought that, brought that logo to life. That is pretty cool. I mean, uh, and I mean, final question. Do you have any advice for my viewers? Um, in, in, in your, in, like, yeah, I do. I, I think for me, um, with anything in life, curiosity is very important. You know, you can be a business person, you can be, a, you know, you can work, be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, but at the end of the day, you're only going to succeed by pushing yourself forward and it takes curiosity to enable innovation. So I would say stay curious. Well, thank you, Tom. And uh, I mean, I hope you have a great night. I hope you have a great day. And, you know, overall, as the year's winding down, have a great year. Uh, thank <laughs> you for finding time to allow me to interview you. Uh, but, uh, oh, of course. And you did a great job. I'm a big fan of your family. So whatever I can do for you guys, uh, I'll do. Thank you. Um, so I'm probably holding you up from from dinner, considering it's you know, uh, it's six o'clock over there, it's seven o'clock here. But uh, I hope you have a great day, and um, thank you. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. Good job. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that was Tom Dunlap. Uh, he was on the phone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he has you know worked on the LA Olympics. He has basically run, he's basically running, working with Casey Wasserman, working with a lot of pe great people to run this thing. And I mean, if there's anybody you should thank for this, you know, for the LA Olympics, it, it should be Tom, it should be his team, it should be Hatcho Studios, it should be, you know, it should be the city of LA, it should be the mayor or the mayor of LA. It should be Casey Wasserman and his team and just everybody in the U.S. Olympic Committee because we have a confirmed in L.A. 2028. I do not know if Salt Lake City is confirmed he, like he said. I'm pretty sure it is confirmed because when looking it up, Salt Lake City does come up as the 2030 official site of the Olympics. But I do not know on the actual Olympic site. Go go look. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know. So basically, I think that makes it confirmed. You know, I think that makes it confirmed. But uh, if not, like he said, that they could be voting on it. Thank you guys. I was really on edge this eve this uh, evening in this interview because every time I've done OBS, my mic has cut out. And so I was very weird, I was very, it was very weird because I was like, holy shnikes, my mic's going to cut out, he's going to be in, you know, the middle of, you know, his final, his curiosity speech was just, which was completely inspirational, and he, you know, and I was like, holy shnikes, I'm going to have to, you know, he's going to have to do it again, and you know, it's not, it's not, it's never fun to do another speech again, you know, uh, unless, you know, unless it's at a different venue on a different day. But it's never really fun to do it uh, in the same day on the same hour, you know, but uh, at the same venue. But he's talked a lot about the great, um, the great Olympic, uh, you know, the, you know, the Olympic struggle, you know, that countries have to throw their, throw some of their people into, you know, homelessness. And he also talked about how, you know, LA is not going to be able to do that. And it's going to be great, you know, and LA is going to have the great, one of the greatest Olympics ever. And he said, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, Olympic Village in 2028 at UCLA. Uh, so, um, you know, I'll be in college, but hopefully I can make my way out to come to the Olympics, ladies and gentlemen. LA 2028 from Hugo Sports 360. I am Hugo Traverso. Have a great day.